Hello, my name is Pete Maloney, and I'll be introducing the topic of model predictive control of a diesel engine air system. After I introduce the topic, my colleague Rong Chen will be going through the details of how we designed controls for a diesel air system using model predictive control toolbox. First, I want to go through the agenda. I'm going to go through the motivation for why you may want to use model predictive control in diesel applications. Uh, then Rong Shen will go into the remainder of the items, including the diesel engine air system control problem definition and the details of how we co-simulate between Simulink and GT Power, which is a high fidelity engine simulation package that allows us to account for the nonlinearities in the engine. And uh, then he'll go into the steps of model predictive control design and validation, which are composed of linear system identification model predictive control designed at each operating point, and then the scheduling of the controllers at each engine operating point. Now for the motivation for using model predictive control, it's well known that engine manufacturers must meet stringent performance fuel economy and emissions requirements. And to meet those, they're downsizing, downspeeding, and boosting their engines. This allows them to use smaller engines at higher power density ends up lowering the brake specific fuel consumption or increasing fuel efficiency on their engines. In order to do that, typically they'll add something like an EGR valve, which recirculates exhaust ba gas back from the exhaust system to the intake system to cool the mixture and decrease NOx emissions. But that addition of that valve also affects fuel economy and performance, so it's a coupled thing. Focusing on performance, manufacturers will add a turbocharger or a supercharger um, that allows them to pump more fresh air into the intake system and get more power density in their engine. But that can increase the temperature and therefore increase the NOx, and it also has an effect on fuel economy. So since fuel economy, performance, and emissions are coupled things, the addition of these actuators can be problematic unless there's a design approach available to deal with that in a coordinated fashion. And that is why multi-input, multi-output control capability is needed. Model predictive control offers a standard scalable approach to multi-input, multi-output control design because it comes from the process industry and it has a strong theoretical underpinning and it's been used in application for quite a long time in that industry. In the diesel engine control design space, uh, there are several applications of model predictive control, one of which is diesel air system control, which we'll be talking about today, and two others that we're seeing are exhaust after treatment control. Uh, so that deals with uh, designing controls to uh, control urea dosing to an SCR catalyst, uh, taking into account the delays and thermal fluid effects across the engine, and uh, also um, fuel control on the fuel injection side, which is a much higher bandwidth model predictive control. But today we'll be just talking about our diesel air system control design example. So at this point, I would like to turn it over to my colleague, Rong Chen, to go into more detail about the diesel air system control application using model predictive control toolbox. Thanks, Pete. Uh, my name is Rong Chen. I am a developer at MassWorks, working on the model predictive control toolbox. The diesel engine air system control problem we have here is a MIMO problem, and uh, the first control objective is to use two manipulated variables. One is the EGR position, the other one is the VGT position, to control two plant output. One is the boost pressure, the other one is the EGR mass flow, as represented in this uh, diagram. And uh, we built this uh, diesel engine plant model in the uh, GT Power uh, based on the, <coughs> the, the paper published by Peter and uh, Luigi uh, in the IFAC 2008. Now the second uh, control objective is 
we want the, our control system to perform well when the engine is running at different operating points. So here we define the operating points along in a 2D space uh, uh, by the uh, engine speed and the torque demand. So in other words, when the plant when the engine is running at a certain engine speed at a certain torque demand, uh, we want our control system can track the boost pressure and the EGR mass flow uh, nicely. Uh, I need to point out that uh, the set points of the boost pressure and the EGR mass flow at each operating point are already optimized uh, using the model-based calibration toolbox. Now, look at the uh, diagram uh, in the slide. Um, we provide we have two uh, lookup tables and so basically it takes um, the speed and the torque demand and it generates the boost pressure and EGR mass flow set points and send them uh, to the control system. Now we built our diesel engine model in the GT power simulator uh, using the first principles and we also use the Simulink interface provided by GT Power and to allow the Simulink model to communicate with the GT Power and to, to drive the plant and then also collect the measurements from the plant. So the code simulation we have here can be used in many uh, tasks. Uh, for example, uh, we can use it to generate the data for system identification we can use code simulation to validate the MPC controller after we finish the design and the implement in the Simulink world. So we'll go over all these details in the rest of the presentation. So now, uh, to the, the general workflow for designing an MPC uh, controller can be summarized in kind of three steps here. And so, since we already have the nonlinear model in the GT Power, the first step we have is to generate a linear plant model from that using the system identification uh, tools. So the main reason to have linear model is that the majority of the control technology, control design tools we have today rely on the linear plant model to work. Uh, MPC is the same story. The first step in the system identification is to generate the experimental data from the GT Power before we can use it uh, in the system identification. So what we do here is at each operating point, um, we will first drive the plant model in the GT Power to the nominal steady state situation. And then we will inject some random signals on top of that to perturb the input that will excite all the, hopefully, all the modes in the plant and then we can use it to generate a linear plant model. So um, the three plant inputs are perturbed here. Two of them we already discussed are the GT EGR position and the VGT position used as manipulated variables in the MPC. The third plant input is fuel mass, which is also used in, in, in MPC as measured disturbances. We'll discuss it later on. And we will carry out a 200 second code simulation. And during the simulation, we'll measure the boost pressure and the EGR mass flow at the plant output and record them in the, in the simulink. After the data is collected, then we are ready to use some system identification toolbox tools to identify a MIMO linear plant model based on the data. So we won't go through the details about, uh, about each step that we use to identify the plant model. So, but in summary, uh, here is what we what we have done um, to the uh, data. So we re we removed the trends and outliers in the measurements. Uh, which basically will, will improve the accuracy of your identification. 
We also uh, need to determine the order of the plant model you want to use. So uh, you have a couple of choice here. If you are familiar with the first principle based model in the GT power, then you you will have an educated guess of what kind of order you expect in the linear plant model. Uh, on the other side, if you're not familiar, familiar with the uh, plant and the first principle model, then you can use the tools provided by the system ID uh, toolbox to uh, to pick the right uh, plant model for your uh, for your SysID task. And then here uh, we basically will use the SSEST command uh, to identify the MIMO state state space model. And also we will use the compare command and to validate this linear plant model against another set of the uh, validation data also generated by the co-simulation. So um, use operating point, uh, this operating point as example. So when speed is 20, 25 RPM and torque is 160 Newton meters, we decided that a fourth order plant model is necessary and to represent this uh, operating point. Then, then we use another 200 second uh, validation data set uh, to compare the linear uh, output against the, this uh, uh, nonlinear simulation output, and uh, we have um, 88% fit in this case. So after you identified the linear plant model, uh, we are ready to carry out an MPC design on top of that. So let's look at the, the details. So um, before I go through the step by step, and the, here is the uh, 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 general question is why do we consider using model predictive controller uh, for the diesel engine problem? So, uh, in summary, there are a few uh, benefits you can get from the MPC technology. Uh, the this technology emerged like 40 years ago, uh, mainly in the process industry, but it has been widely used in many other industry. Uh, in recent years, such as uh, uh, auto, aero, semiconductor, pharmaceutical, utility, etc. Uh, the most important feature is it has an internal a linear plant model. So the plant model actually models all the couplings between the channels so that you don't need, you don't need to have any uh, uh, other decoupled technology outside of MPC controller. And the plant model also predicts the future behavior of your plant such that uh, the controller will have more knowledge to use to generate the, uh, the best move you have, you can have into the plant. And the controller also handles the constraints uh, explicitly. For example, if you know your valve can only move from zero to 100%, then you can explicitly set those constraints upper lower range in the MPC controller such that it will be honored during the optimization running at each sample time. The MPC controller also provides both feedback and feed forward control. Uh, for example, the EGR and the VGT positions are used in the feedback loops, but the fuel mass input is used as the measured disturbance to the controller such that the MPC controller can compensate this fuel mass change in advance. Now let's look at the details about how you design an MPC in the, inside the MATLAB using our model predictive control toolbox. So since we have the plant model, um, we're ready to design an MPC on top of that, but before we generate an MPC controller and tune the controller, we need to do a few things to the plant model. Uh, for example, uh, you need to specify the types of input, all, all the input and outputs, such that uh, MPC will know which inputs are the manipulative variables, which inputs are the measured disturbances, and which outputs are measured outputs, etc. 
It's also recommended to uh, scale your plant inputs and outputs. It will benefit you later on when you want to tune your controller. Uh, so if you can scale plant with their nominal values or the known range of the operating, then you can use them to scale the plant such that the, uh, the weights can be adjusted in a more uniform way. You also need to provide the nominal values of your plant inputs and outputs if your plant, your controller is supposed to run at a particular operating point as we do here. The last thing you may want to do is to augment your plant model uh, with unmeasured disturbance channels. It will give MPC more knowledge about unmeasured disturbance such that it can reject them better and in the in the runtime. Since you already have your uh, plant model processed and you're ready to build a controller on top of that, the MPC controller is represented by an MPC object in the MATLAB workspace. So there are a few tuning knobs you can adjust in the MPC controller to achieve the desired control performance. Uh, that includes the sample time, uh, prediction and control horizons, hard and soft constraints, weights, and estimate gains. So I won't go through the details of how to adjust them for different uh, purposes, but uh, in this particular design, we, change, we, we tune them to, so that the MPC controller will provide a good tracking uh, performance for the boost pressure and the EGF mass flow. So after you obtain the MPC controller, and uh, then you need to validate it. And so they're usually in, uh, involved two uh, steps. One, the first one is to need to validate against your linear plan model. It can be the same linear plan model you use in the MPC controller or a different one which represents the modeling error. So in this case, we pick up the operating point of speed equals 2025 RPM and the torque equals 160 Newton meters. So you can see uh, for a 10% boost pressure step change, we have two seconds settling time and almost n very almost none overshoot. And for 10% EGR mass flow step change, the settling time is one second and the, the overshoot is also minimal. So they look pretty good. Now, let's use the code simulation to verify the controller design against uh, a nonlinear plant model. So we apply the same step change in the boost pressure and the EGR flow. You can see that on the left, that we have a much larger overshoot uh, in the boost pressure tracking performance, uh, which will uh, give us a hint that maybe, maybe we need to detune the boost pressure uh, control performance such that we'll have less overshoot. And uh, in the EGR mass flow uh, plot, actually the overshoot is not that bad and uh, we, it, it, it's, it's totally acceptable. Now, after you finish your MPC control design for each operating point, now we, we are ready to uh, implement the gain scheduled MPC controller inside the Simulink environment and then validate this design against the, the diesel engine plant model running in the GT power. So uh, gain scheduling is a popular way uh, in the control world to solve a nonlinear control problem with linear control, uh, a set of linear controllers. Uh, in this case, we identified nine operating points, uh, which uh, which will divide the, the diesel engine uh, uh, space into like a into by uh, into low, medium, high speed versus, uh, versus low, medium, and high torques. So, and one MPC is designed for each operating point and validated through code simulation. So, after you have all the nine operating points, now that the, the, we're ready to implement the gain schedule MPC in the Simulink. The first, let's look at the plant, the input and the output of the control system. The first group of inputs is the reference. So remember that uh, the, the reference, the set points of the boost pressure and EGR mass flow are coming from the lookup tables 
So these the the values is based on the the operating points. So when operating points change, these optimal rep uh, set points also change for the MPC controller. The second group of inputs are the plant measurements. So we collect the boost and the EGR flow measurements from the GT power. The third group is the measure disturbance. We only have one signal here, which is the fuel mass. The fourth group is the switch signal that tells the MPC's control system to choose which MPC to be active. The output of the control system is the EGR position and the VGT position, and they are sent to the, uh, the GT power to drive the plant. Now let's look inside of the control system. You can see the main block here is the multiple MPC controller block, sh which is shipped with the uh, model predictive control toolbox. And when you double click the block, uh, you will, it will open the block dialog and inside of the dialog, you will specify all the nine MPC controllers in this list in the middle. And as I said before, only one controller is running at a time and all the other eight controllers are tracking the plant input and the output such that it will update its own state estimate and then prepare for later on when it switch on, there will be a little bump in the transient. So let's look at the as how do we generate the uh, scheduling signal in this case. So we divide the, the operating range into nine areas. For example, if the torque is less than 120 Newton meters and the speed is less than 1600 RPM, then the MPC number one is active and so on and so forth. So we use this meta function block uh, to generate the scheduling signal for MPC. It's a very simple script on the right side. You can see that uh, it generates nine integers uh, based on what, where the speed and the torque demand is. So after you implemented the gain schedule MPC in the Simulink, we're ready to validate the, de the design uh, with code simulation in GT power. So in this particular case, we uh, we used uh, a wide operating range. Uh, so we will ramp the engine speed from 1200 RPM to 2800 RPM in five seconds. At the meantime, we also ramp the torque demand from 70 Newton meter to 170 Newton meter in, fi in the same five seconds. You can see the engine speed and the torque demand profile in the pictures on the slide. And uh, here is the tracking performance. So on the left side is the boost pressure tracking performance. So notice that there is a little bump uh, between the 17 second and the 19 second. So this actually corresponds to MPC number four. So um, that will give us a hint that we need to go, we may need to go back to revisit the MPC number four design to see why uh, we have a, such a, a bump in the transient and the, why the tracking performance is worse for this particular controller. And for the rest of the, tra uh, the tracking performance, you can see uh, it, it more or less close to the uh, reference trajectory and uh, we are okay with those uh, performance. And on the right side is the uh, EGR mass flow tracking performance. You can see that um, it tracks, the measurement tracks the set point pro profile closely, but we have some deviation uh, here. Uh, some of them pretty, uh, is, is not considered small. So that gives us some hints that maybe we need to uh, put more penalty on the, uh, EGR mass flow rate such that we'll have a tighter control of this plant output so and it will get closer to the uh, set point profile. And this slide shows you the um, manipulative variable trajectory and also you can see that on the right side we have four controllers used in this co-simulation. It's the controller number one, 
number four, number five, and the number eight. Since the GT Power code simulation usually takes long time to complete, uh, we actually uh, record the code simulation. And uh, here we will show you a, a video clip that uh, demonstrates uh, the, how the controller performed in the code simulation, and you will see the exactly same result I just presented in the slide. So after you validate your game schedule controller and uh, against the uh, GT Power plant model, the next step naturally is to deploy the controller to the embedded system and test it against a real engine. And uh, the MPC controller blocks support uh, C code generation with Simulink coder, embedded coder, and other targets. Uh, it also supports both single and double precisions. Uh, the sample time for MPC can be as low as one millisecond for a typical uh, control problem. And uh, it also demands larger uh, memory footprint um, compare if you compare the MPC with other type of controllers such as PID and AQR. So before I... Uh, conclude my presentation, let me show you the how to generate the code with the MPC block in the Simulink. So when you switch to the uh, Simulink model, and which is we used to, uh, to, to, to run the code simulation against the GT Power, and there's, this is the control system, and then when you goes in there, there's a multiple MPC controller block here. So if you right click and you choose the build subsystem, it will start generating C code for this particular block. Uh, it will take a while. You can see the information in the um, in the MATLAB window and uh, the code is generated in the multiple GRT RTW folder. If we open this multiple.c file, you can see the C code generated for this multiple MPC block. Okay, that concludes my presentation of how to design um, game scheduled MPC controller system for this uh, diesel engine uh, plant running in the GT Power. Thank you.